Welcome on Thamesboard Online Education course. Our team has designed these lessons to help you become familiar with the platform, go through it and extend your possibilities in IoT solutions development. Telemetry feature allows you to report, process, store, query and visualize device or other entity data points. For example, device can report its battery level and Thamesboard can visualize it on the dashboard or trigger alarm in case it violates certain threshold. To have telemetry reporting, you should first connect device to the platform. Thamesboard Community Edition supports HTTP, MQTT and CoA protocols by default. The basic usage of these protocols is covered in Getting Started video. I'll push data on behalf of my device using MQTT protocol. As you can see, the data immediately arrives and visible in telemetry tab for my device. The protocols are pledgeable separate project modules. So, with Thamesboard you can use own TCP or UDP based protocols. In our upcoming lessons, we'll disclose connectivity options to learn everything about connecting LoRaWAN, Sigfox, NB-IoT, BTLE or other devices. Thamesboard supports four value types – Boolean, Long, Double and String. Example command below will demonstrate usage of different data types. As you can discover from Entity Details window, Assets, Customers and Tenants also have a telemetry tab. But those entities don't have separate credentials, so physical device cannot report data on behalf of them. However, external scripts or applications may report telemetry data for assets and other entities using REST API. Also, some telemetry may be derived from devices. For example, if you have a couple of temperature sensors in the warehouse, each of them is a device and warehouse is an asset, sensors report telemetry individually. By combining this data, Thamesboard can calculate minimum or maximum temperature in the warehouse. This will be an asset telemetry that is derived from the device sensor readings. All collected data before persisting into database might be validated, enriched and or processed. For example, some GPS sensors push latitude and longitude equal to zero when they reboot or lost track of satellites. Do you need to store it for visualization? Probably no. Do you need to track such cases? Most likely yes. Thamesboard can control your data streams with the rule engine feature. This is a rule engine that validates the incoming telemetry and either stores it to the database or generates the alarm in case the data is not valid. Data arrives to the first rule node after input. The node checks the data is post telemetry type. Next node verify the data has latitude and longitude keys. If it does, Thinsboard validate the incoming message and check the values of keys. In case of validity, the data goes to the database. Otherwise, rule engine raise the alarm. Let's push valid and invalid data to the platform. As you can see, valid data is persisted. Invalid data causes the alarm. Now you know how data is validated, let's review how it's stored. Each telemetry record in Thamesboard is identified by unique key and has some value. This unique key is basically a combination of entity ID key name and timestamp. Entity ID is an ID of particular device. Key name for our device is battery level. You are free to use any key names. Our engineers strongly recommend to define names in literal camel case. 
The timestamp represents the time of measurement. Timestamp of a record is in milliseconds precision. So, you can record data that is measured or produced with a frequency of 1000 Hz. In future ThingsBot releases, new data type will appear to simplify storage and query of high-frequency data. Telemetry is stored in SQL and NoSQL databases. Using PostgreSQL, telemetry data is indexed by entity ID, key and timestamp, which allows, for example, to quickly search by timestamp range. SQL suits well for a lot of workloads and can support tens of thousands of devices and years of low-frequency data, like smart meter in use case. To store more data or scale horizontally, we suggest to use one of the NoSQL databases. In this case, data is partitioned based on configurable parameter. For example, partitioned by day, month, year. This allows to filter large volumes of data faster. ThingsBot allows to configure TTL for the data in case of NoSQL databases that support TTL, like Cassandra. Once the data is stored, we can query it from the dashboard or subscribe to data chains via WebSockets. Querying historical data is supported using both REST APIs and WebSockets. Since board widgets are using WebSockets whenever possible. External apps may use REST API as a simple and well-documented alternative. In both cases, you are able to execute the query to get historical and latest values using following parameters. Mandatory parameters are Entity ID, ID of your device, asset or other things board entity. Keys, comma separated list of telemetry keys to fetch. Starts and ends, timestamp the defined time range in milliseconds. Optional parameters are Limit, amount of data records to return. Egg, aggregation function, one of known, minimum, maximum, sum, count, average. Interval of aggregation. For example, if time range is one day, you can put interval to one hour in milliseconds. Similar but rather simple, you can get the latest values of any telemetry using following API call. You can find info about WebSockets API on the official documentation page that is listed in the video description for your convenience. Of course, the inboard widgets allow you to use the REST and WebSockets telemetry APIs in more user-friendly and productive way. You just need to drag and drop desired widget and configure the time range and data source. We'll cover this in the next videos.